How you doing? We are back in the shop uh, doing yet another lithium battery test. In this one, we are going to test uh, paralleling two lithium batteries, one that's 100 amp hours and one that is 200 amp hours. Well, in this case, it's an SOK battery that is 206 hours, but the effect is going to be pretty similar. So I get a lot of people asking me, well, can we parallel different size batteries together? You know, a lot of times you got like maybe a 100 amp hour Battleborn, and then you maybe want to pair it with a 206 amp hour uh, SOK or whatever. And what happens? So uh, I've got some equi Victron equipment here. We're going to log all the data and take a look at it and see what actually happens. Oh, my old trusty test rig. It's still a mess, but it's going to get the job done today for us. So let's take a look and see what we got going on. We've got our inverter off. Our battery is at 100%. We've got uh, a 206 amp hour SOK battery here. And this is being run through the main shunt here. And then I've got a second shunt on a 100 amp hour lead time battery. And these are put in parallel, ran to the uh, positive and negative bus bars here. So when we uh, put a load on here and we're gonna do a like a 300 watt or so, about a 30 amp draw on the system with a space heater uh, running through the Victron Multi Plus. And we're just gonna see what happens and the VRM online logging for the Servo GX here is going to log all the data. Now, if you'd like to play along at home, uh, go ahead and maybe write in a comment, what do you think is going to happen? And then if you're really honest, reply to your own comment on what you think uh, or your reaction to what actually happens. Now, I have an idea of what will happen as well, but I haven't actually done this yet. I don't know exactly what will happen. And that's part of the fun with this. And uh, so I hope you continue to watch. And also, uh, just a note, we have done a lot of battery experiments. I think we even have a playlist on our channel, Soda Solar. Uh, check it out uh, for other battery experiments, solar panel experiments, all this kind of stuff. Uh, check it out. And uh, if you want even more, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. All right, uh, let's start this test. Being that it's starting to get a little cold here in Minnesota, I love when I can use a little space heater for this test. So let's get that going. Uh, our inverter, let's turn the inverter on. And then uh, I'm probably gonna need a second hand. Uh, maybe we can get this done with one hand. All right, we got our space heater plugged in. So that's kicking out a little bit of heat. And uh, starting, starting to get a little draw on here. Yeah, now we're getting up to about 30 amps. So let's, uh, well, let's just take a quick look. And what is going on here? I don't know how quick this is gonna show up. <clears throat> so one of the other things I have going on here is I have a custom uh, widget on the Victron VRM website uh, for this called 100 amp hour versus 206 amp hour lithium in parallel. And what this is doing is it's tracking the voltage and state of charge. And maybe I'll change that to amps, I don't know. But I think it'll, be effectively the same thing. I'm tracking both of those things uh, across both of those batteries here. So we're gonna be able to see what will happen as we put a load on it. I couldn't leave well enough alone here, so I uh, pulled up both the uh, main battery monitor summary as well as the 100 amp hour lithium battery summary. And so what you're seeing is this is the entire system as a whole versus just the 100 amp hour battery. So the amps from this one is included in this one. So we can deduce by subtracting 10.2 uh, in this case from 29.9 uh, or let's just, let's round 10 amps, 30 amps. So if we deduct 10 from 30, we get 20, which kind of makes sense because that's a 100 amp hour battery and the other battery is a 200 amp hour battery. Okay, it has been almost a full day and I've been discharging this off and on, partially to kind of get a sense for what would really happen and also I didn't want it running all night when I wasn't awake. So uh, lithium battery is about dead. It says 0%, but there's still some power left in there. The main system as, over, 
overall is 8%, which is pretty much just the uh, 200 amp hour battery there. But uh, there's some interesting things that have happened on the graphs. So let's take a look here at what's going on. All right, here's our uh, 100 amp hour versus 206 amp hour lithium battery in parallel custom widget that we put together on the Victron VRM uh, system. And what we have here to quickly review is we have the, uh, we're graphing instantaneous current and cumulative current. So consumed amp hours and uh, basically amp hours at any given moment. And what we see right away, what's interesting is this 100 amp hour battery fluctuates a lot more than the larger battery, which is, I think, to be expected because there's just less, uh, we'll call it electrical inertia there. But what we see here is initially uh, 13 amps is coming out of the system versus uh, 30 overall. So that leaves about 27 to 26 amps coming out of the larger battery. And we run that for a while. And then as the discharge continues, we see that number drop almost by two amps, we get down to 11.7, which is closer to what I would think. My thought would be we would actually be at 10 the entire time, which is half of uh, what's left over. So I, I know it's a little confusing, but that 30 amp number you see there, that's of the total. Now, what is interesting to me is this is when I stopped the test at uh, 22.54, what is that, almost 11 o'clock last night, Check this out. Once I shut things off, uh, for a good amount of time, 2.9 amps went back into the smaller battery. The larger battery was actually pushing a little bit of current into the larger battery. And we can see that by the consumed amp hours, let's see, it starts at negative uh, 40.9, and where does that end up? After some time, negative 38. So what, two, two amp hours got pushed back into that smaller battery. Interesting observation. I don't think it means a whole lot. It looks like by morning, 37.2. So uh, 2.8 amp hours got pushed back into the little battery. Anyway, then we started it off again uh, in the morning and ran it quite a bit longer. And now we're down to five amps only coming out of the little battery and the majority of the load is being supplied by the larger battery. Now I also had some solar in this system, that's why the overall current dropped a little bit. And then I stopped it for a little bit and that's kind of where we're at right now. I stopped it for a little bit and I wanted to see what would happen again and sure enough again, uh, at a lower discharge rate, we actually saw, looks like 5.6 amps of current flowing back into that little battery. And where did that end up? Four, eight, let's see, how many amp hours total? Went from negative 96.4 to negative 95.7. So not even a full amp hour traded places. Then I ran it some more, and you can see the current continuing to drop on that smaller battery. Uh, but something to keep in mind on this, you know, I'm talking about current a lot, but we're not really talking about voltage. And for the most part, the voltage pretty much ends up staying exactly the same. There's a little bit of differences, in part because of how the voltage is actually measured. Uh, there's a little bit of difference in slight variations, but we're at 14. 46, for example, and on the other side, we're at 14.43. Let's see, all the way down near the bottom, 12.33, uh, 12.31. I think actually when I meant to say here, when I said 14, I really meant 12, but you guys are smart. I'm sure you caught that. That's just kind of how some of this data uh, worked out. I do have, or I'll include the, uh, the link to this VRM data in the bottom of this YouTube video. If you're watching it shortly after this is put out, you could probably take a look at it right away uh, and see what you can conclude from your own research. 
uh, after a while I do reuse this system and relabel things for the next test. So if you come back to this in a month or a year from now, this data might not be available. Uh, if you're looking for a specific date and time, you're looking for, uh, what is it here? Friday, January 12th, 2024. Now we've done the discharge. Now I think next, to fully complete this, we should charge these all the way back up. Uh, now based on what we've seen here, what do you think is going to happen when we charge up? I know I've learned something a little bit. I expected the smaller battery to be 10 amps all the time and the larger battery to be 20 amps all the time. But that turned out not to be the case. It was interesting that the smaller battery put out more power earlier in the curve and then less power later in the curve. But something to keep in mind is it always delivered power. And that's because of the voltages fell together and they delivered amps as required to satisfy the load. So anyway, let's see what happens in reverse now. All right, we are about done. It is quite a bit long or quite a bit uh, after this last video update. I wanna say, I don't know, five, six hours. Let's take a look at uh, how things ended up on the charge up. We did see some interesting things. So this is, let's see. Yeah, that is the draw down. And here's the charge up. And I know we got a lot of things going on here. So the consumed amp hours is going up on both of them. But the thing that probably that's most interesting is the 100 amp hour lithium battery got full way faster than the other ones. I was expecting both of these lines to converge at about the same time. That's what the white line is the 100 amp hour battery. So it's only down 4.6 amp hours. Meanwhile, the 200 amp hour battery is down 60 amp hour. Or, well, we need to subtract 4.6 from 60, so 55 ish. Not the end of the world. And then you can see, of course, this blue line is where the amps fall off on the lithium. And so it's barely taking any power. Meanwhile, the uh, other one's taking almost the full 32 amps that I was charging with. So uh, that is that, I guess. Uh, I mean, the good news is it gives that littler battery a ton of time to balance on the way up. But I was really expecting them to uh, be a little bit more similar, but it could be that they are completely different brands, obviously, SOK versus lead time. So the question is, what does this actually mean? Okay, we've got some data here. We were able to discharge two batteries in parallel, same chemistry, and charge them up in parallel, same chemistry. Nothing caught on fire. In the end, uh, you know, nothing, I would say nothing really adverse happened. The biggest thing that happened was under no load, Sometimes there would be some amps that would switch from one battery to the other. And the only thing I would say there is you might be concerned, well, those are going to be some losses there with, you know, a battery charging a battery. But what I would tell you is what we saw in this case was as, as little as I want to say about four amp hours. And of that, these batteries are 99% efficient on charge and discharge. So that means you're losing worst case scenario you are losing 1% of four amp hours. So if you're worried about 400 milliamp hours, then definitely stay away from this. If that doesn't bother you, uh, keep in mind your phone probably has about uh, 3,000 milliamp hours. Uh, I, think, I think you're safe to parallel most any lithium battery uh, together without a problem. And we've even, uh, on a previous experiment, we paralleled a lithium and AGM battery together uh, without any real problems. The thing I will say, and hear me on this, do not, do not, do not, do not do this in series. If you're trying to make a 24 volt battery, those batteries need to be matched perfectly. In fact, even two batteries from the same manufacturer can be different. And that's why we really recommend for higher voltage systems, 
having one battery, like a 24 volt battery or 48 volt battery. You don't want to be combining 12 volt batteries together to make that work. It just doesn't work well. You're going to need an external balancer. Any money you save kind of goes out the window. Uh, just buy the voltage battery you need for your system, if you can. Uh, that would be my, my recommendation. So, um, got a couple more of these planned. I appreciate you hanging around for it. Um, leave a comment down below if I did anything wrong or if you'd like to see this done in a different way. I am thinking about adding another shunt to that so it's a little more clear on exactly what's going on when we compare two batteries like this. But uh, hopefully you were able to follow along. Uh, made sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, leave a comment. Uh, that helps me out to explain things a little bit better. But uh, I don't think I have anything more to talk about, so thank you, and uh, we'll see you again next time.